Sports Wellness Center. You probably clicked on this because you're interested in cancer and that's what I want to talk to you about today. It's somewhat of a serious subject but there are answers and I hope to give those to you today. Uh, about 1974, when President Nixon was president, he declared a war on cancer where huge amounts of federal resources would be mobilized in order to do research and develop medical protocols to help win the war against cancer. And in those years, however many years that is, 35, 40 years since that time, there has been very little improvement in the outcomes of people with serious stage cancer. Now, wouldn't it be good if a person could find out before they had cancer that they were either brewing cancer or that they were susceptible to cancer? Or if you have a family history of cancer where your mom or your dad or your brother or your grandfather had some kind of cancer and it gets your attention, you know, could I be getting the same kind of cancer? And we know genetics does play a role in this because certain bodies you know, do certain things and those genetic lines follow those things and so your susceptibility may be higher. We know for sure, and this is according to the Center for Disease Control, that approximately 85% of cancers are caused by environmental poisoning. Now, our environment is full of poisons. There's 70 plus thousand chemicals used in body care products and pesticides and plastics and petrochemicals that we are inundated with every day. Styrofoams and all kinds of stuff. You put something in a microwave and you get those things in. We know if something's wrapped in cellophane that the chemicals in those plastics are get in the food and we eat them. We know that here in Clearwater, Florida, our water supply has approximately 500 things added to it which are not natural to that water. So we're around this. If you smoke, if you eat foods that have uh, dyes and preservatives, you're getting chemicals. So these chemicals can be carcinogenic. Add to that things like heavy metals, mercury and arsenic and cadmium, and, um, and our, our environment has a lot of that stuff in it too. So those get into our body. They may come in through the fillings in your teeth. It may come in because there's a coal burning plant near your house and it burns. It may be we're seeing huge levels of uranium in our patients now from nuclear fallout. Uh, I don't know where this is coming from. It might be from Fukushima in Japan. It might be from Iran where the armor-plated weapons, uh, armor-piercing weapons have uranium warheads. So our environment has this stuff in. It's in the water. It's in the food. We get it in. So that's half of the cancer problem is we have environmental chemicals that are in our body. The other half is that most of us have nutritional deficiencies. And so our body's mechanisms, our immune systems, and our hormone levels, our detoxification systems don't work right if the body's missing zinc or vitamin D or selenium or amino acids or essential fats. And so when the toxins come in, if the mechanics of the body aren't right, it can't detoxify. And so you get in this catch-22. And eventually what happens is that these poisons get deeper and deeper and deeper into the inside of cells. They damage the DNA and the DNA goes bad and cancer genes get turned on and the person gets cancer. So there's two things on this. What do we do if someone wants to prevent cancer? And the other thing is what do we do if someone has cancer? So let me talk about those two things. In preventing cancer, we have to get the toxins out of the body and we have to replenish the body with the things that it's missing so that it can then operate well. And we can test for this. We can also test for when a cancer cell goes cancerous, it stops using oxygen in order to produce its energy. And there, are, there is a test that we can do on the blood to see, does the person have a lot of cells that are acting this way, where they're not using oxygen, that person is much more susceptible, or they have a low-grade cancer or a brewing cancer, where if we get it early, we can turn the thing around. So that's what we want to do. And so we, we look for what are you toxic with, what are you deficient with? And if I just ask the question out there, like how many people know that you're not deficient in vitamin D or in vitamin A or in selenium or in zinc? Do you know that if you don't have enough zinc, the cell which has gone bad, which is supposed to then self-destruct and die, it won't happen if there's not enough zinc around? So these things are very critical and most people are not getting tested for them 
and doctors aren't generally screening people for this, and they're doing things that occur too late. You get a mammogram that is positive, and that cancer's been there for eight or ten years. It's too late. You already have it. So in prevention, what we're looking at is looking at you so that we can prevent it, and especially if you have some family history, that you get it early so you don't get cancer at all. So that's half of it. The other half of it is what if you have cancer? Well, it's really very much the same thing. We have to get the toxins out of your body, and we have to get the nutrients replaced in your body, and then we have to give you therapies so that your body isn't, your immune system isn't destroyed. Part of the problem with regular cancer treatment is that the treatments are very hard on the immune system. They make the white blood cell count go down. And those fighters, which are supposed to eat the cancer cell, they get hurt. And they can't do it. And then when the cancer comes back, then the person can't live any longer. So the therapies that we're looking at are trying to reduce the number of cancer cells using what we call insulin potentiation therapy. It's a way to use chemotherapy in very small doses, but we think are very effective. And we build up the immune system by using antioxidants and oxygen therapies so that that cancer cell gets sort of hit from two sides. And it helps people and it doesn't debilitate their immune system and we think it gives people a better chance. So if you know someone, if you are someone who's worried that you might get cancer or want to just prevent it or you're someone who already has cancer or you know someone, then we would like to see them because we can help. And we're having successful treatments with people, and we're having good treatments in preventing things with people, and it really makes a difference. And I want to give you a very personal example. Someone very close to me had a screening test, which we call a thermogram. It's thermography. It was a test of the breast. Now, a thermography can pick up early brewing cancer approximately within two years, whereas a mammogram doesn't pick it up for about eight years. So this person had a thermography done. It showed an abnormality in one of the breasts. Okay. Now we did an ultrasound and we did an MRI and we found that there was no actual cancer there, but those cells were sick. They were stressed. We did some treatments on her. There were some things that had to be detoxified. We had to improve the circulation in the area. Uh, we had to do some hormone balancing. And when we repeated the thermography, that breast then looked normal, like only three months later. And what we averted was, in five or eight years, if that thing was ignored, that could end up as breast cancer. But since we found it, it's not going to do anything. And she'll get screened again in six months just to make sure. But that's what I'm talking about. You can catch this stuff early, you can prevent it, and you can save someone from a lot of horrific things. Okay? So, if you want to find out more, please call us. Uh, we're Clearwater, Florida. Our phone number is 727-466-6789. We'd love to talk to you or come to our website. It's www.lifeworkswellnesscenter.com. Thanks very much.